Ryan, shall we begin? Let's do it. Podcast number 59. Welcome, comic fam. You're in for a treat. You're in for a fantastic time, a fabulous moment in history that you're going to join us. We're going to talk about funny books. We're going to talk about friendship. We're going to talk about some strange this podcast 59, the Bags and Forge show. We got Fire Guy Ryan in the house. We got the comic butch and we got spoilers that we're going to talk about, but not till the very end of the show. Ryan and I went and saw Doctor Strange yesterday. Mind blown. So Literally. stay tuned to the very end, but we're going to get into those spoilers at the very end of this show today so that if you want to get the good comic content that we're going to be pump- pumping out here in a second, and I would go as far to say that it's not just good, it's fantastic. It's really good. It's really good. We read some good <laughs> comics today. Um, we will also be touching on kind of like a post-experience show about Doctor Strange. I digress. We're going to be talking about some bizarre comic books today. We've read a bunch of funny books. And before we get to that, Ryan, why don't we tell them about a couple of the ways that the community can support what we do. The first thing is the May Mystery Mail Call. Mail call, mail call, mail call. ComicTime101.com, link in the description. One per box. We are sending out this gorgeous starlight cover. You look on the screen, you can see it, but you can also go to ComicTime101.com and remind the community that this podcast is available on SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and iTunes. We're going to be getting you ready for boys season three. We're not messing around this month. Um, first off, I wonder if the if the update will happen in time. It doesn't look like it. There will be a point where I will show you another cover, but it's not going to be at this moment. We have Starlight by Ben Templesmith on boys number seven. This is the original run of the boys. That is the first appearance of Stormfront, which is going to be a villain that will reprise their role in boys season three. But that's not all. We are going all in this month with the power of Dynamite Comics. We know that Jensen Ackles from Supernatural is going to be portraying Soldier Boy in boys season three. He's like a terrible version of Captain America, right? Um, he is a, a mockery of patriotism as far as superheroes go in the boys lore. And he's going to be debuting in boys season three. So one per box, we are going to be including as a second guaranteed exclusive boys hero gasm issue. Number one, a reprint of the initial run featuring the first appearance of soldier boy. Now, very big warning this month. This is a mature box. It says it on the website that it's a mature box. However, we have to go a couple steps further because these two books happen to be key books that are important in comics, collector's value, right? But they are some of the most mature exclusives we've ever made. Easily the most mature. Yeah. It, I spent hours the other day at our Mystery Mail Call warehouse putting a mature sticker over the back of every single one of these comics. So you can't even open this without acknowledging that there's a mature warning on there. So we put it on the website. We put it on the comic book. However, the key significance is what we're talking about here, which is why we wanted to make these legendary comics and exclusive. And we have Ben Temple Smith as well as artist extraordinaire, Johnny Desjardins okay. on Homelander rather hero gasm with a Homelander cover that we will show you later on the show. It's a good cover. I promise it is fantastic. You guys are going to love it. Also, Another sponsor. Well, not a sponsor. Yeah, excuse me. This is our best way for you to directly support what we do. We're here for you every single week. However, the first sponsor of the show that makes this all possible is the best comic app in existence to buy and sell funny books, Whatnot. And if you notice, I hit 5,000 followers on Whatnot this past week. Hot that damn comic the fam. A- applause one. There you go. Thank That's- you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I want to thank the comic book community, all the publishers who support us. But for real, the comic fam, you guys are showing up in waves every single week, and it's outstanding. The chat is on fire, and it's motivating us to bring better and better vintage books, key books. We are doing upwards of five to six giveaways every single stream. This is a place you got to be. And on Wednesdays, we pack the house with over nine hours of back-to-back selling. I go on at 5 p.m. But the day starts out with the king of the Gem Pyre, Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles. Boy, Gem Mint. At 2 p.m., um, followed up by Nerdy Girl Comics, one of the, uh, the, 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 the biggest 
dealers in the entire country. As, like, she deals with some of the most prestigious vintage books. Um, she owns an action one, you know, like we have some of the best dealers That's on right. our streams. We also have at uh, four o'clock, Russ, the comic sensei, Mill Geek Comics. We go live at five o'clock here with Heron Heavens at six o'clock. Comic Pops, that's my dad. This is all his fault. He goes on at six after us. Followed up by Sammy and Tony from Skeleton Key Comics. Rage, Theo at eight o'clock. The Golden Age Guru at nine. And we end the day right with Nate Johnson, an artist who's doing original sketches and so much more. Come join us on Whatnot. If you click the link in the description and it's your first time downloading the app, after your first purchase, you hook us up with a $10 credit and you get a $10 credit so we can both get more funny books. Another round of applause for Whatnot for making that happen. Let's start the show with some comic books that we read. We're winging it. We're winging it today, comic fan, because we just... We oh. forgot to put these in the order that we're going to talk about them in, so we're just going to go for it. And it see don't what matter, happens. man, because I want to talk about apocalyptic okay. kid. Uh, it's another apocalyptic narrative and another the, one it's another one but yeah. here's the thing i want to chat about it because not only is this a fantastic read that people have to pick up on the creator team alone like really that's all that that's i needed to I see however i think it's important to like discuss a bigger problem that happens in the comic book reading quest when there's you're a, searching there's a meta conversation to be had here i think do you want to have that conversation with me ryan today Right now? Right now? Why don't we talk about this book? Okay. Okay, take a look at this. What are we reading? Little Monsters. This is from Image Comics, written by Jeff Lemire, with art by Dustin Nguyen. Dustin kills it on the art, and it's a different kind of style than you know him from, from a couple different, I don't know, like Descender, just a it's, handful. The covers are, are like, in his more traditional, like, watercolor style here. Mm -hmm. It's not what the interiors look like. Correct. Not, not exactly. So this is one of those situations where Ryan and I had a unique meeting of the minds, where... You told me, I'm not too sure about this book after issue one. I was pretty vocal about disliking this book after issue one. But once you got to issue two and three, you're in. Yep. As am I. And I've said this on the show multiple times that when I am looking for comics to get into, when I am, you know, going through narratives and, and diving into the reality of comics, you know, I like to read comics back to back. I don't like reading them monthly release at a time. I prefer a graphic novel. I sure. prefer three comics at once versus one. And this right here is exactly why. If you read issue one, it's not a lot, not, not a whole lot that happens. There's not a whole lot of bite to it, if mm -hmm. you would. Mm -hmm. Vampire puns. Vampire puns. That's why they come here. Comic fam, hit the like, slap the subscribe the reason button. You guys came here is vampire puns. However, this right here has a twist to it. That will make you go, really? Hold on. Another apocalypse book? I'll double down. Another apocalypse book that follows children? Triple down. The children are vampires. And they've been living in this post-apocalyptic America for a hundred years. That's the twist. That's the twist. There is a twist. There is a twist. They're vampires. But Jeff Lemire. Sure. If Jeff Lemire makes a book... You don't judge the whole story by issue one. He's earned that from us. That's true. Right? And he's one of those writers that I am more likely than not going to get the book just because his name's on it. I've skipped a few and I've regretted it in retrospect. Like May's book is a book he did recently. I passed okay. and I regret it. I heard it was awesome. Didn't read it. But I wasn't going to make that mistake here with Little Monsters. I'm glad we didn't, Ryan, because this story is superb. Um, we've already mentioned the creative team. Um, it's more of a black and white story as far as the art goes with hints of red for accent. And we've seen that too. happen. We've One seen of that the happen. kids in this book is like a graffiti artist. Yes. So we do, actually this kid right here, Ro Romy? Romy? Ro Romy. I, Romy? What, I've been calling him Romy. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it, but they are a graffiti person. <laughs> there's a better there's a better word <laughs> for what graffiti people are called. artist graffiti artist okay yeah, probably vandals sounds like a like a bad word <laughs> but they like to just draw on the wall so you do get splashes of color when you see the artwork that they do on the wall and then the blood but and the moon or the, whatever the sun is yeah the sun, I don't know what I assume the, that's the that's got to be the moon because they're vampires they're yeah, not they can't come out in the sun that's right whatever that ball in the sky is is reddish orange. 
the detail work, the yep. negative space is exactly what you want to see. You know, this is a dreary. Is that the right word? Dreary? Dreary? Dreary. Dreary? Dreary works too because it's weary as well. You do it's get a little a, weird. You do get, oh, I was that too. I was going to say weary. You do get the sense that like these, are, these kids are tired. That's right. You know? They've been around for a long time. You know, bored, which is kind of why this first issue feels a little boring on its own. That's right. You know, we get introduced to a handful of children. um, And the interesting thing that takes place is that issue one sets up the psychological aspect of this, uh, of of the character's particular experience in time. Having lived 100 years and starting to get extremely bored. It's kind of like Stillwater. Like they're stuck as kids for all this time, too. They're not growing up. These are like permanent children. Who happen to be vampires. We have Lucas who plays a lot of music, for example. He's playing guitar and he is writing songs constantly. And he gets asked by one of his other vampire, you know, siblings, we can call them for, for, for as far as we know in this it's story. It's hard to know their names also, by the way. Yeah. Like, I, can't, I can't remember what her name is, for example. They'll tell us in a few pages. I'm sure. But right now, I don't know her name. I don't remember her name. They all blend together at this point still. She asks Lucas, do you ever just accidentally write a new song, but realize that it's actually a song you've already written. It it starts to make you think, okay, you have children's minds, right? Like you're dealing with some, someone who would be fragile, you know, someone inexperienced, someone who the world is their oyster, right? But what if they're the only ones around? What if they're going to live forever? What if a hundred years goes by these children, they're going to experience things over and over again to a point where Life gets dull, and that's what he's exp- expressing. He used to write his songs down in a book. He used to perform them, but now the only thing that's really exciting is to do it fresh live. And you really get a peek at their psyche here, you know, how tormented these individuals are because they're a group of vampires in a world where there aren't humans left. We don't know why. We get a, we'll get a little taste of why, but we're going to let you guys sure. dive into that yourselves when you inevitably get this book because it picks up quick. There's three issues out at this point right now, so it's still relatively recent. There's not a lot of information about why exactly there are no people in this world. We just get this roving band of vampire kids who are eating rats. True. Because there's no people. There's no people. They don't even really know what it's like to have the taste of human blood, which is really what the vampire life is all about, right? It's supposed to give you that energy. It's supposed to give you that, that agility that vampires are known to have. These, they have a lot of the same vampire traits. However, in this world, they're with no humans. You got to eat something. So clearly they're eating what they can. They can eat rats. Even these boys down here, these twin boys who are also vampires, they, all these kids are vampires. Right. They're like the kids who I think back when I was younger and my mom would say, Hey, yeah, go have fun. But you know, that those kids, their parents let them do a little more Those are than we like. Kids. Not necessarily bad, but the ones that are a little bit more rambunctious. They're more likely sure. to jump off of something, you know. They're more likely to get get dirty or whatever, you know, play in the mud or what what have you. It's kind of like you know the Phil and Lil type of I kids was here. Literally just thinking Phil and Lil. By the Whoa, way, Whoa, Fire yeah. Guy Ryan. Ryan, you're reading my mind. I'm reading mind? it. Yeah. Maybe we're both have some type of like psychic connection. I don't know, but these kids are Phil jumping off of stuff yeah. and. One of them breaks their arm and he says, oh, damn, this is going to take a whole day to heal. So clearly we have a lot of the same vampire traits. You know, this is very much been done before. You know, the lore is all the same. However, the twist that they are the last ones on Earth, supposedly, is the big reveal that makes this so intriguing. And talking with you before we went live kind of changed my mind on this comic even more. Because you pointed out specifically how this book gets into their psyche and what it is like being, what it must be like being stuck in these bodies in this world with no people and only each other to keep yourselves entertained and what that does to your brain over time. It's not what you'd expect hearing that it's a vampire book. This is definitely, we just talked about what's the furthest place from here recently. That clip actually just went live like today. On YouTube, so it's pretty appropriate on our on our channel. But this book reminds me a lot of that, like a group of child friends wandering around in an apocalypse. However, there's vampires. It's a weird twist. We end um, issue one. We're not going to give you too much more of a spoiler here, but we want to leave you with, um, with some meat on the bone. The discovery of a human that they haven't 
encountered. Like in general, they haven't encountered humans at all for quite a long time. But clearly there is a human that gets discovered in this issue. And these children are going to taste blood for the first time. They're waiting on someone to return. Now, that person, we're not going to show who they are. We have ideas of who, they're co- who they could be. But there is a vampire, a, a elite vampire, a, a lord of the vampires, a king of the vampires, possibly Dracula, who knows? But there's someone that they're waiting on to return, but it's been such a long time. Be, I would be really bummed out if it was actually Dracula. Like, it better be just be a vampire guy. Just like, someone fresh. Not Dracula. Count Dracula would send this book in a completely different direction. <laughs> Count Dracula, Ryan right. says. Comic fam, we want to know your thoughts. What do you think about the apocalypse themes that have been so prevalent in comic books? I feel like every time there can't be something fresh, something new. I get surprised. I think before we go on this one book, I think the overall message needs to be you, if you're reading a book monthly, you need to give it more than one issue. No, oh, absolutely. I almost made the mistake of dropping this book out of like rage, rage quitting this book after being disappointed with the first issue. And I think over time it has been getting better. We're going to touch on this a little bit in another review, but sometimes when we get rec- when we get asked for recommendations, for example, hey, I want to read a Batman book. I want to read a Spider-Man book. The first thing that I go to isn't necessarily like the latest type of uh, uh, no. of story that I can pick, pick off the wall or point to. It's always going the writer slash artist direction first. Let's get him some some Scott Snyder. Sure, right. That well, makes that makes that's usually more dependable than like like Jeff Lemire, for example. Like giving boom. them a writer that you know can deliver a good story versus here's Batman. You like Batman? Here's Batman. There we go. Comic fam. We want to know your thoughts. Are you picking up little monsters? Are you going to? I think you should. You're going to be excited about it. At least get the trade. At least get the trade. Um, But they're on issue three right now. And it's got me all in. Speaking of which, um, why don't we talk about some scout goodness? Okay. We we got... I, right. I want to have fun here because this book caught me by surprise. Same. Oh, my goodness. Um, and I also have to pull up the caffeine notes. Caffeine for this one. Ugh. Ryan's already piecing out. He's saying he needs some caffeine. For this book in particular is going to require a little extra oomph. I was so excited about this comic book. Um, you know, sometimes comics are so wild and out there that you really do have to have um, – you know, have experienced a handful of other books, other, you know, hit books, heroes. And you start to see that the narratives expand. Sometimes it's like very comic booky and it goes all over the place. And, you know, if you're a bit more affluent with comics, you've experienced it before, you'll go there with the book. Sometimes it's got to be really into the genre. For me, it's like horror. If there's right. body horror, I'm in. I'm going to enjoy that. I like seeing weird stuff. I like seeing artists flex their horror, right? Right. Sometimes on the other end of the spectrum, which is really the root of where comic books derive from, it's like the um, newspaper. Your comic strip. Comic strip. Yeah. Exactly. Humor. That's right. Humor. You Quick don't really wit. get a lot of humor in comic books, which is weird because it's comic is in the name, but I can't think of a lot. They're called, fu- you call them funny books all the time. Right. And I can't think of many comics that are funny offhand. Well, You know what? That's going to change today. I want to take some time to show the community this brief little video because it's going to really set us up right to talk about Ranger Stranger by Mm -hmm. Scout Comics. And who's the creative team? We got Adam Battaglia and and Tyler Tyler Jensen. Jensen. They both write it, but Tyler does the artwork. Okay, cool. Let's see if I can uh, get this on here. Comic fam, hit the like button, slap the subscribe button. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful day to talk and read about comic books, funny books, and all in between. This comic made me laugh. This is going to make you laugh. This is a book that you got to add to your poll list if you have some. It is mature. It's however. mature. You like dark humor, but let's, let's give them a taste. Oh, oh hello. I'm Gondlin Woodburn, head ranger in charge of rangering here at Hackenneck National Park. Hello? Is anyone there? What does that mean exactly? Well, as a public servant of this vast sylvan woodland, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, God, please help us! There's so much blood, and I, I think the quail are coming back. 
but I am sure it's not all lumineers and lumber sexuals here. No, the true ranger is sensitive, wise, and brave, keeping an ever-vigilant watch over the flora and fauna who call this majestic land home. From the Clare Mountain Lakes to the flowery meadows, he's dedicated to preserving this wonderful heritage for you and me, our children today, and nature tomorrow. So follow along as we explore this great outdoor treasure of ours, Hackenack National Park. Oh my goodness, Ranger Stranger, that's, out the gate, uh, such a strong comic book. That's such a good like summary of, of the flavor of this comic. We got to describe the flavor because we can't get too much into the stories because... This right here is one of the quickest reads as far as comics that you can enjoy because it's filled with short jokes that complete in just one, if not two pages at most, sometimes contained to one single panel like it's a new strip. There's like eight or nine, I think, different short stories. Stories is a little overselling it, I think. Like yeah. you said, like they're really quick. But they're, they're jokes. If anything, it's jokes. We have like a 1950s, right. 60s vibe of a park ranger who is doing his job you know, inviting the community to enjoy the great outdoors, to the campgrounds, and to preserve the environment. However, with a big twist, dark humor. He's kind of like a like like if you took uh, Ice Cream Man from Image Comics and put him in a blender with like Ron Swanson, right? And a little bit of like Sterling Archer, a little bit mixed in together. Like this is a very bizarre character, but this comic made me laugh. Repeatedly while reading it. This is definitely one of the funniest Scout comic books I yes. have read all year long. Bravo to the creative team. So what we're going to do is not spoil, because if, if we start showing you a bunch of panels like we do typically with our yeah. reviews, the whole book is spoiled. So we're going to take you through just a couple jokes, short narratives on the mic to give you a taste of what this comic provides. The first co being called Cry Me a River. Let's go through this, Ryan. Here, I'll be the, uh, I'll be the girl, and uh, you be all the other characters. How about that? Okay. All right. Here we go. Cry me a, a river, episode number four. Are we going to blow up the dam? Hey, Mister Woodburn, are we here for a picnic? I imagine that's what the beaver sounds like. I think so, Ryan. Yeah. No, you little psychos. That's next week's episode. We're here for the annual salmon spawn. Oh, snap. Did I pick the look at, one? Look at all those fish. We've started, man. Let's go. Oh, we've started. I, I don't we know if I have it, it all, though. This one's Oh, longer. I screwed up. I screwed up. This is it. All right. Let's, let's like, all right, uh, ignore that first one. Oh, man. Or right, go for, start with this one. Uh, I apologize. Go ahead. That's not even the first panel. You're all, you're all over the place. This isn't the first panel? Uh-uh. That's oh, the one you want. This there is the one go. I want. Here we go. Sorry about that, comic fam. Let's get it. Up. All right. Oh, episode man. seven, starting so over. Salmon spawn. Sleep tight. Salmon spawn's my favorite. I so I gotta I gotta save want. it. I, I gotta save it. The one you didn't want, and I was gonna try and hopefully just let you go with it. And maybe we maybe ah, okay. All right. Ah, read your Whitburn, help! What is it, you two? The, there's a monster in the closet. That's, a, that's what that's what beavers sound like. That's what beavers sound like. Hmm. Empty. Nope. No monsters here. You see, children, sometimes the dark plays tricks on us. Shadows and objects seem ominous because we fear most what we cannot see. But in reality, we're safe and snug in our cozy little beds. And there's nothing to be afraid of but the void of our own imagination. So, uh, good night, Ranger Woodburn. And besides, I'll be here to protect you, okay? Okay, good night, Ranger Woodburn. <laughs> so he puts on a mask. It looks like Good a night. demonic mask. <laughs> it's a terrifying mask. Good night. Good night. He's got a big old butcher knife and he's sitting here next to the bed and he turns the light off. Click. So that's it. That's the end of the story. That is the end of the story. You uh, know, there's no monsters here as he's putting. There was. Did you notice that, by the way, in the closet? In the closet, like there was a, a monster? In a Jimmy T sense, there actually was a monster in this closet. If you zoom in real close. On oh, right there? Oh, yeah. Is there a monster There's actually in the definitely closet? definitely an object. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I did not notice the monster that's actually in the yep. closet. So he's lying to them the whole time, and I guess he wants to, like, fight this thing in the middle of the night, and a demon, I don't know what's going to happen, but 
<laughs> they definitely saw a real monster in there. Okay, let's give you one more. The Laughter of Man. All right, here we go. We're talking Ranger, St- Ranger Stranger this by Scott Comics. The, this, is how, this is what you see when you first open issue one. This is the very first little short story that's in there. It starts with a nice, peaceful fishing boat on a lake. So you think like, oh, cool, it's going to be a nice outdoor. That's right. Nature story. I'm, and I don't and know it's what I'm getting beautiful. Into. It's a beautiful scene too. And we gotta also make sure to be describing what we're seeing for the audio, co- sure. for the audio fam. But picture uh, the death of Fredo Corleone in Godfather Part Two. You know, a nice go. boat on a lake. You got you got that establishing shot here. Do you remember that time when I pulled the chair out and Ranger Stenson fell backward, hit his head, died, and everyone laughed? So we have our ranger and this cute girl fishing in the boat in the close up. And this is the conversation continued. Of course, it was hilarious. I know. The DA feels the same way. I'm being given the Man's Laughter Award. The highest honor bestowed on a forest ranger, I imagine. It's like when the queen knights somebody. Sir Garland Woodburn. And then you just have a <laughs> static shot of both characters. The fact that they're looking directly into the camera is what kills me. Right it's there. like breaking. It's like a. It's like a you know gym look from the office. Just sure. kind of breaking the fourth wall, smiling. Just wide-eyed, yeah, it's Archer. Got Archer. It is like very Archer. Very, the thick lines and the, the way they're drawn, it, it looks... And it doesn't stop. We have another panel of them holding the same shot, <laughs> looking at the reader. At this point, you're starting to chuckle as you're reading this because you right. know that this is so this is, bizarre. This is weird. Manslaughter? Right. She manages to actually put the word man's laughter together into one word. And he goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... And that's how it ends. <laughs> and that's it. That is the two stories that we wanted to share with you. Ranger Stranger is filled with these short jokes that take place over sometimes as little as eight panels as you just saw. That was two pages, but like half of them were blank and quiet and empty. And I'm really pissed that we didn't get to do the salmon one. If the comic fam wants us to do the salmon one in the future, you got to comment down below. Let me know because it'll enter you to win this invincible number one whatnot. Omni-Man Tyler Kirkham variant. Comic fan, we're talking about comic books. And do yourself a favor. If you're looking to pick up some Scout Comics goodness, they're a partner of the show. They're not a sponsor. We don't get anything from this. However, there is a 10% minimum discount you can get on your Scout Comics orders by using code TOM101 on the site because we're such big fans. And Scout Comics wants to hook up the best community in the world. And that's the Comic Familia. All right. I'm thinking we need to do a little bit of a... Viewer, 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 viewer. Oh, like comments. It's kind of get it. Yeah. You did I do a good job, Ryan? Yeah, I was. I was scared. Okay, here we go. Dodged them all. Colin Fung says, "My gold foil Sandman also had a dent by the bottom staple. Hot damn!" I picked that comment just to remind you of the pain. All right, so you got it right there still. Okay. It's an unfortunate thing, but. I still have it here. I'm going to open mine. I may have to send this off to like Hero Restoration for them to fix it. But you know what? I I love the book so much. And I'm so all in on James Tynan IV, also known as the great Jimmy T. Jimmy T. Substack, where you can get these gold foil variants if you subscribe to the top tier. You get six of them. There's been two of them that's been released thus far. The third one looks freaking outstanding. Department of Truth. Department of Truth. We're oh, gonna yeah. we'll end up talking about that one as well. We'll unbox that when it shows up. But we have the something is killing the children. We also have the Corinthian on Sandman, Jimmy T style. And Ryan got another got a package. package. A package from Jimmy T. How does I'm it feel to just be getting packages from one of our fun. favorite writers? It's fun. I don't order enough stuff. So like getting an email saying, like, hey, you got something on the way. It's like, oh, that's fun. For, okay, real talk, comic fam. We almost missed the may oh drop and i swear ryan and i were texting we were each panicking. other we we're panicking what happened why didn't we get what happened yeah i was sweating dude. Oh, i was so pissed because the okay there's a theme right there's a theme to these drops i got it open you got it you, you open okay. oh oh okay. there's a theme to the drops yes right the first the first month was something is killing the children you got yes. a something is killing the children shirt which tom and i both had the white erica slaughter shirt as well as variants the gold foil each month kind of has a theme so the first month was for the relaunch of Something is Killing the Children, 21. Then last month was for the launch of Sandman, Nightmare Country, number one, that James Tynan just started. And the new drop for this month right now is all about Department of Truth, because that is finally coming back with a new story arc. It's like my favorite James Tynan book, other than Nice House on the Lake. One of the most important comic books to be reading right now, according to Scott Snyder. That's a it's, quote. It's, it's one of the best. It's a great comic, and I love it. And 
I missed the ball on the because when you're part of the Onion Club, like Tom and I are, you get uh, like two days advance notice That's to right. to pe- to purchase these exclusives. Because they drop, and there's only like 500 copies or whatever they're doing. Very low print. Low print, and being the highest subscriber member, we have early access to scoop up what we can. And Unless then, you sl- oversleep and set your alarm for the wrong day. And like, then you have to fight, you know, the other, you know, the muggles, basically. The muggles. <laughs> <laughs> is that derogatory? I don't think so. It's Harry is Potter. It? If, 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 you were to if call Malfoy mud, can mud say bloods it. is the derogatory one. Oh, they're true. There oh, thank you for correcting me, Fire Guy Ryan, Ryan in the house. I know my okay. stories. Oh, dude. Did you get the shirt? I got the shirt. You got did the you, closet did shirt? Did you not get the shirt? I haven't gotten it yet. I have to go to the post office. Oh, here, open it. Oh, let me check it out. Okay, so aside from there being just killer variants that you get access to, gold variants that are super low print performing exceptionally well in the marketplace, he's dropping Merch. IP shirt, like like his properties, uh, T-shirts through this substack, And Ryan got... Ooh. Ooh. Okay, oh, that's cool. snap. That's cool. The freaking closet. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, I like the the fabric is soft. Right? The Erica's Lauder shirt is real high quality. All right. We chatted about the closet on the show. This is a story that follows a boy who is dealing with just family struggles. His parents are arguing constantly. And it's only three issues, right? Did you read number three? Because number three, just it just wrapped up. They it just, just wrapped, wrapped up, up on the sub stack. Number one was just on FOC yesterday. So That's issue right. one's going to be dropping real soon. So it was released on Substack first, and then the, they're actually going to print because it's so popular. And it follows, it's just the struggles of a, of a of the family sector, the husband and wife really not getting along, how that affects the, ch- the child. They're going through a move to try to run away from their problems, not working out too that well. That always works. Never works. Especially when your child has a monster in his closet and that's what it's about. But we don't get into it more than that because it's, again, it's a short three issues. So just pick it up yourself. I am very hyped to get the comics in print. What else did you get? I already got these. You already got these. Right. Did you just get more? I think they sent me double. So this right here is the Corinthian variant. And Ryan got more copies somehow. So big thank you to <laughs> Jimmy T. Unless I actually ordered eight of these, and I don't think I did. There you go. Go I follow did. Ryan on whatnot via the Milgi Comics. That's uh, true. You know, you probably I bring guess, some of these there. I guess that's a good place for these to end up. I'll give them a make a good giveaway. Very yeah, cool. Are, I don't believe you can still order these. All right, so we're looking at um, what I got my copies of last week or the week before, Nightmare Country. Um, this was ex- an example of one of the variants that was open to order. However, right. you got early access if you were part of the Onion Club. Very cool. We're doing Jimmy T unboxings on the Bags and Boards podcast. In number and now they officially announced 59. that all this stuff will be re- delivered at the end of the month, once a month at the end of the month. So this should not be as frequent of a portion of our show moving forward. Dan De La Torre said, I'm hoping that the upcoming Thor movie doesn't over-focus on comedy. Can't agree with you more. I'm hoping there's a, there is a reference to Loki and his dealing with Kang. If that poster is accurate, then this may happen. I have to agree with you. We're going to get into Doctor Strange spoilers at the end of the show. I'm not a big fan of comedy in I, superhero stuff I and kinda, in my horror, man. I kind of disagree, as with the exception that this movie's uh, these last two Thor movies are from Taika Waititi, who is like true a comedy he is, genius. He is a genius, isn't he? I think the comedy notes in other Marvel movies with other directors kind of are hit or miss. True, but I think Taika. I, Thor Ragnarok is like you know what for I take back reason. what I say. You're right. I, I started confusing with other Marvel movies that I'm not a big fan but, of that. I do think Thor Love and Thunder, I think with Gore the God Butcher and like Jane Foster and like <laughs> cancer, <laughs> like there's there's less potential less. here for like slapstick moments. So I'm hoping there's less comedy than in Thor Ragnarok, but I still hope these are funnier than most other movies, like other than like Guardians. What do you think, comic fam? It's hard for me to imagine Gore the God Butcher being funny, you know, like he it's... better not be funny. If he starts cracking jokes, I'm gonna be upset. All right, next next uh, comment we have seven six zero six three C two CO2. I, I was a child at the time of the sev- at the time of the 70s. So for those that weren't there, Hulk was arguably Marvel's most popular character that decade. It was definitely between Hulk and Spidey for Marvel's top spot. None of the others were even close. What do you think about that, Ryan? So that was from our uh, Grand Design standalone video that we did. And sure. I, I would agree. I mean, I wasn't alive back then, but I do know that, you know, you had the TV show and on the top of every Hulk comic, they always said like the TV sensation or whatever. They had the whole that whole image in the Grand Design book. Absolutely. Um, in reference to Jim Rugg's incredible piece of work, 
over 40 pages of Hulk narrative that takes you through like the first, I believe, 300 issues. I'm still waiting on issue two, by the way. Our shop did not get them delivered on time, and I'm, I'm waiting. You got to love it. That's what happens. As Comic Fam, are you guys getting Hulk Grand Design? This is something that you got to own. You got to have it in hand. You got to read it in hand. It's one of the Physically, few things. Like yeah. One of the things about Cartoonist Kayfabe, shout out, is that these creators, uh, they know their comics well. Obviously, there's a reason why Rob Liefeld has been on their channel like all last week, just killing it. They've gone through the process of creating comic books over and over again. It's the indie grind. So they know the paper. They know the ink. They know the colors. True. They know the, 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 the mechanism of putting together comics in such a way that it's more enjoyable to read by hand. And grand design, is, ex is that's what you need to tell the Hulk story accurately is you're giving every page a glimpse, the, the, the reader, a glimpse of the past and what younger readers like the, the member who commented felt when they were first reading Hulk. And I got that vibe every page, whether it was the marketing, the ads, the, 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 the straight homages that were taken from the pages of comic books, then Jim Ruggified. Yeah. You got to read Hulk grand design. That's the, the bottom, the bottom line, short answer, read mm -hmm. it. Physically. Luke Sims says, love this episode. I owe this channel for getting me back into comics. Found the podcast on a whim. And the first episode I watched was you guys begging us to read Nice House on the Lake. Best book I've ever read. Since then, I've been reading a ton of Tynan and other indies. Also got back into the Ultimate Spider-Man. Also got back into Ultimate Spider-Man with the Omnibus reprint, The Walking Dead with the Color Deluxe Comics. Huge thanks to Tom Ryan and the comic fam. It sounds like we're doing our job right, damn it. I will accept your praise. I, I, I do, and that's what this channel is all about, is about growing the community and making comics a, a bit more palatable for the general audience, you know? Sure, we try to find the good ones and let you know which ones we like, and hopefully that, you know, comes across. Awesome, and let's move on to the next part of the show. I'm thinking we gotta talk about some bizarre comic books. Mm. I'm excited. I purposely didn't read too much into this before our show. We're like, we normally no, we normally prep pretty thoroughly for like, okay, this is the next book. Here, here's what you need to know, Ryan. But I this was an exception, man. We had to. Yeah. This sometimes, you know, it's more fun to hit the community. I'm excited with some just weird stuff. This all is right? from Key Collector, right? Yeah, this is all from the best comic app in existence for learning about comics, for bettering yourself on the hunt, and so much more. This app is filled with categories, a lot of categories, um, but the categories are free for everyone to utilize. You don't even have to use code Tom one one to unlock a free two-week subscription because these categories, by and large, are there for you to enjoy. However, there's a handful of categories that are subscriber-exclusive categories, such as Hot Keys, The Spec Deck, Dollar Bin Diving, and we've made shows about those very lists before, but that's really getting you like ahead of the curve on stuff, seeing if you can have some comeuppance. But we picked a category today that I just wanted to hit Ryan with because I think it's just fascinating. Not every comic book is key status because of the things that you would think. First appearance here, new costume, first team up, first battle, those first are, time writer did this, first Claremont. You know what I'm talking about? To me, those are kind of boring and I don't really honestly care as much as a lot of people about like, you know, th those are cool moments in history. It's got to strike a chord, you know, right, like if it's a Green Lantern thing, you're like, OK, I get sure. it. Sure. Sure. Even then, though, like I'd rather read a, an interesting story. There we go. Which I think is That's, all, all of the books I've heard about on this list so far. Like I want to read, especially this one. This I really want to read this. Okay, so this is a very intriguing comic book, if I should say so myself. This right here is Action Comics 309, 1964. We have an appearance of President John F. Kennedy, who had been assassinated. Assassinated who had been assassinated days before the issue went on sale. Now, there is a person masquerading as Clark Kent, but Superman is in the issue. We Can all know. I want to read this dialogue out loud. Read this thought bubble. Superman is thinking something. I want to, I want to make sure. What is he reading? Because well, we have also a... there's a mermaid in the back. Wait, say it again. Say it again. There's a mermaid in the back. Yes, there is. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay. So Superman is thinking here. He's shaking the hands with somebody, and there's a big arrow pointing to him that says, "Who is the?" He's mystery shaking. Well, we got we got to do him better than that. Okay. Let's describe the cover to the audio fam. We have Superman shaking hands with Clark Kent, sure. who is the mystery masquerader. Who is the mystery masquerader? 
There it is. And okay. we have Batman and Robin and Supergirl. Everyone's and smiling all goofy. Like they're, they're all did. in line waiting to meet Superman. And what does sure. Superman say? He's thinking to himself, all my friends are here to congratulate me. But will anyone guess who is the man disguised as Clark Kent, my secret identity? Dun, dun, dun. And as you will find out in this book, uh -oh. there's a mystery to uncover. Because something is wrong here. There's two different people that, sh that are the same person, Clark Kent and Superman. And throughout this narrative, we have just a bunch of wacky comic booky stuff, you know, 1964 narratives here. Yeah. However, it gets revealed that Clark Kent is actually wearing a mask and it is revealed to be John F. Kennedy. Ooh. There we go. Yeah. Concealing himself so he can meet. The Man of Steel. And what I find interesting about this is that this would be on sale. Like the week he, the got week he was assassinated. Yeah. So it's a little. It's creepy. Irie. I feel like they would have pulled this in, in, the, in the modern era. You know, maybe they had quicker ways to pull something like that after, after that happens. But mm -hmm. that book um, traditionally sees um, high average sales of like upwards of 150 to $200. Next on the list at number nine. Weapon Brown, number one. Now, what does that, what Charlie does that make you think? Charlie Brown, based okay. on his outfit here. Based on his outfit, we're looking at a almost like Rob Liefeld-esque character that is, you know, fresh from the 90s, rocking Ugh. patches, rocking a, a big huge gun. arm and a big jock pouch down there. <laughs> and then like a big bald Vin Diesel head. So the first thing we got to say is that this came out in 2002, Okay. $30 average sales. However, I will tell the community that you shouldn't pay $30 averages because <laughs> this issue is print on demand on Indie Planet. This is a website where you can upload your independent comic books and they'll print the comics per order. So that means you can get this book right now for whatever it costs to pay for the comic on Indie Planet. However, this is a book that everyone needs to know about. It's a parody of Charlie Brown that describes the main character as a blockheaded, wishy-washy killing machine. It's a one shot that collects a peanut scorned, a story first printed throughout the four issues series Deep Fried. So okay. it also includes an original story titled A Weapon Brown Christmas. Now, I actually read through issue one. Oh, there's interior art. Okay. Look at this interior art. So we have what is clearly Charlie Brown flying a kite. But bulk. He's bulky. He's, he's getting, well, he's, he's like a teenager here. He's not a little tiny Charlie Brown like we're used to in the comic strips. Well, the thing is, is that he's bitter. Um, what we're looking at is a Charlie Brown trying to fly his kite and the kite wraps around his feet and he falls and he's frustrated. Look at his mouth. He's, he's mad. He says, failing probably again for the thousandth time. But wait, there's more. Apocalypse. <laughs> Nuclear bombs go off. Nuclear bombs go off. On the horizon, clouds rose, roaring towers of black and orange. They were like trees, a grove of magnificent flames. Malignant flame. I'm reading this from the side comic fan. Bear with me. So it was the most was beautiful the most thing beautiful I had thing. ever seen in my life. <laughs> I want to read this so bad. I know. You got to read the, the Charlie Brown uh, hardcore um, narrative. But look at this. Good Lord. He gets oh, turned into like a Punisher, like a Punisher style character. He's wearing like a protective cup yeah. on the outside of his pants. That's for good reason. Because the dude was hit with major radiation. This right here is That's a mature. That's why he's got no hair. Exactly. Okay. They're see? giving you some backstory to Charlie Brown. You're finding out more info about Charlie, Gra oh, Charlie man, Brown. Charlie Brown. Good grief, comic fam. All right, next on this list. Um, it looks like I'm getting a little out of order. No. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Just don't have the cover? No, I don't have the cover, but I'm going to find it for the comic fam because it's muy importante. Let's see if I can get it here. Um, we have... This is the Superman book. Oh, my God. The Superboy book. Oh, where is it? Comic fan, bear with me. It's the Bags and Boards podcast. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. It's for it's these moments that I need your support That's more it. than ever. When he fails, just when like I fail. Charlie Brown. All right, I'm going to pull it up while we do that. Here, one second. You can, you can Google it, right? Oh, I can just get the cover because I have everything else. So we be good. We be good. Superboy sub, number Superboy 75. Superboy 75. The note here says... Superboy spanking cover. That's and right. I don't know what this is. All right. Oh, 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 oh. okay. You got to see this cover. <laughs> it is freaking ridiculous. Okay, so um, this is one of the strangest Superboy covers that you're ever going to see. Uh, what does that say, Ryan? Can you read that? 
Can you zoom in a little more? Yeah, I'll zoom Featuring in. the Superboy, number 75. What Featuring. are you looking at? First, what are you looking at for our audio this, fam? And then read what it says. This is a Superboy bent over the lap of Jonathan Kent. And Martha Kent is observing, supervising this whole thing happening. And he is spanking Superboy with what looks like a brush. But the brush is broken. It is bent and broken. And it says, Superboy, featuring the punishment of Superboy. And Jonathan is saying, gosh, Ma, I forgot it's impossible to spank Superboy. How can we punish him for being a bad boy? <laughs> That's so good, dude. Freaking uh, oh. comics were so weird back in the day. But you know what? This is a compelling mm. conundrum, if I do say so myself. How do you how do you punish that child? It's it's very, very difficult to I figure don't that have out. Kids, you know? Um That's so the um this comic book actually doesn't dive into this very specific act that makes the cover so You mean it doesn't have the cover on the inside of the comic? Isn't that weird how that they did that weird. back in the day? However, Definitely what they don't do that anymore. But what they do 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 is discuss the challenges of how to parent a boy that is that sometimes causes mischief because he's a Kryptonian being. So they're giving you the backstory of why he gets in trouble. That's right. Okay. So here's an example. We have Superboy. He is at the school aquarium because he apparently some schools, public schools, they're like, you know what? We got to invest in a lot of things, but what we really need is a fish tank as well as electric (laughs) eels. That can't go wrong in in, 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 in elementary school. Oh my goodness. I can't talk. There we go. So in an elementary school, good heavens. If the teacher turns and sees my son Clark holding these electric eels without harm, she will know he has superpowers. See, you can't it have that. It tickles, too. I like the it tickles. That's a good... It tickles. So... It never dies. This just... It's a quick story, but it shows different situations that this child gets in that causes problems in his life, and while having to keep his identity secret makes it that much more difficult to parent. For example, there's a, a, a baseball that gets hit by a bat on the outside. It goes through the window, into the classroom, bounces off the steel, you know, it's basically as strong as steel head of Superboy and then hits the teacher in the head and then naturally the teacher gets pissed. I love, it's good that you're showing this because we're going to talk about something. We're going to talk about the Silver Age yes. in a little bit. So it's kind of relevant and important that we actually have examples of what the Silver Age of comics was like. Like the teacher wanting to punish the child, because that's what they did. You know, they would just whack the kids with rulers, apparently. But then the ruler breaks on his arm. The challenges of raising a child with superpowers. Superboy number 75 goes for around $200 high average sales. This is a book from 1959. Goodness. Okay, this next one, I'm so hyped for you. I, I'm really hoping you did not read anything uh, about this. Team Titans. This is Team Titans not number teen eight. Titans, number but eight. Team Titans. So this is a future character who come. Uh, this is a this is a, a a future Nightwing who comes in from the future and gets introduced for the first time. Nightwing from the future embraces evil and becomes Deathwing. Deathwing. He so dons a plunging V neck that exposes his. Wait for it. I'm waiting. Oh good. <laughs> pierced nipples. Pierced nipples. Someone that is a that pierced out. nipple. Oh, that is. Look at it. How does that make you feel, Ryan? It makes. I don't want to tell you how it makes me feel, but it makes me feel real good. <laughs> Three dollar average sales debuting in 1993. Ninety three. The guy That's named right. Deathwing. That's not a surprise at all. This. <laughs> I don't need to see any other images. Do you have any other interior? I images? have one more for you, baby. Boom. There he is. Now Deathwing lives. Look at that. Look at what that. What is the purpose of that shirt? It just covers up his armpits, basically. Well, he's got to show off it that. It leaves his pierced, his pierced nipples very clearly showing. But also the edges of his shirt have to like be rubbing up against the... the, the it's got to be a little <laughs> uncomfortable to right? wear this costume is what you're saying. It must be. And it tucks in at his waist. So I imagine he's got to like constantly be stuffing it back into his pants. And like, it's a lot of work to look this cool. I look think the real... Spiked qu- armbands and he's got like the fins on his, on his wrists. I think uh, that there are not enough... Wow. Heroes with pierced nipples that we, you know, that are in comic books let's, currently. Let's normalize that. That's what I'm trying to do here on the Bags and Board Show, comic fam. Next on the list, at number six, Hellblazer 
Numero 247. This came out in 2008. This sees $3 average sales. Again, we just talked about a $4 book. This is a, excuse me, a $3 book. This is another $3 book. We're talking cover price for bizarre comic books. We found them on Key Collector, the, the best comic app in existence to learn about funny books. This is why the hunt for dope keys are amazing because not every one is super expensive. And I like the bizarre. Yes. I like too. the weird. I'm enjoying this. How do you think the Batman slapping Robin became a key book? Right. Right? It's just some random It's a random book. thing that happened in culture, and, and it, it kind of just personified a moment in time that people now hunt for. We have Hellblazer 247. To perform a magic ritual that will temporarily hone his abilities, John Constantine uses mortar and pestle to create a fine powder from the bones of St. Nicholas. <laughs> the inspiration behind Santa Claus. This is the quote. Oh, no. Looks like it's going to be a white Christmas after <laughs> all. Uh, okay. John Constantine grinds up the bones of St. Nicholas. He needs to. What the hell? He needs to grind them up. He needs to do his magic that he does so well so that he can get his powers back. He looks at, you know, there's this postcard of Santa Claus and does what he does best. <laughs> oh, he snorts Santa Claus. This is hardcore. This is. He uses uh, a straw to snort the bone dust of St. Nicholas. This is why uh, John Constantine is one of the coolest characters in DC Comics. He gives no Fs, man. You don't see Superman doing this. He sure as hell don't. All right. I'm hoping that we see something like this in uh, the, the Swamp Thing. What's it called? Red, Green Hell? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah I want to see some, some of that. Time. Come on, man. Let's, let's do it. Next on this list at number five, we got a Punisher book that always goes so on. It just goes underloved, undervalued, underappreciated. And it's kind of a key Wolverine Punisher book. It's a $4 comic. Battle of Wolverine and Punisher in a story called Vertical Challenge by Garth Ennis. You know, Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson, the boys, they don't mess around, the yo. Boys. Come on. It's a two-issue arc with sequences of violence where Wolverine takes a shotgun blast to the face that exposes the entirety of his adamantium skull. Yeah. Look at that beautiful art. Terrifying. Terrifying. And that's what we're talking about, the bizarre. You know, Punisher is going to go all in. He's ruthless. He's lethal. And he blows Wolverine's face off. And what we're seeing is a adamantium covered skull only but just the face exposed somehow his, somehow his eyes managed to survive a shotgun blast that's right the he, weakest part of the face that's right but they, they managed to stay intact maybe They're they grew back fast enough a terrifying image but that's not the only thing that happens i can't show you this next part comic fan but i'm going to tell you about it is it, it too graphic it is too graphic fun the punisher then incapacitates capacit um incapacitated look then incapacitates, I can't say this, incapacitated Logan. There you go. Yeah, you got it. All right. He, he, he knocks Logan oh, out okay. with a close range shot to the genitalia and assured him that they'll grow back. The He's Punisher. He knows. He's seen it before. Blasts off Wolverine's Logan's Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. Logan's little Wolverine or whatever. We don't, we don't moderately know. We don't have a picture. <laughs> right. Moderately so. He's average. I don't know. All right, comic fam, what do you think about this? Because as far as Wolverine books go, key moments, strange things, this right here, as Mojo Quid says, literally so metal. Next on the list at number four, this is one of those strange ones. This is definitely not something that's like outrageous, what but it is, is bizarre. Marvel, during the Thor run did what was called an Marvel animal variant for a bunch of different comics. And this one happens to be done by Jennifer Parks. This is an artist you can find on Instagram. I scrolled through her, their Instagram page and she does a lot of different animal drawings, but I'll also, I'll, it just also does like nature drawings as well. This one in particular features a cat on Thor's body, but it's not even on Thor's body because those are paws for hands. So this, this is, is like Thor. a it's cat Thor. Sure. But you'll be surprised to know First, that a lot of people will overlook this cover. They don't know Jeez. about this cover, right? Right. $35 averages. It's being listed 9.8s for two to $300. Okay. All right. It's these types of moments in variants 
that people overlook and then are surprised about being worth money because it's so bizarre. It's so. Did you get any of the other ones? No, I, I just got this like one. a Wolverine or like a Cyclops. <laughs> if the comic fam likes and subscribes, uh, maybe we'll actually come back and do some more um, the coverage of, of these, these variants. Animal variants. I did not know those existed. And this is amazing. Next one on this list is one that I've showcased on the show multiple times. We're talking about Sir Cates, Donnie Cates. He writes this book called Baby Teeth, which ah. I'm surprised we haven't talked about on the show yet. Yeah. I, I want to get caught up. It's I, ongoing. I did read a little. I think it actually just ended. Did it just end? It recently ended. Okay. Well, I, I know they were I up there the beginning in numbers. It. So I got I to gotta dive into it. But this is a Baby Teeth number one variant wraparound cover that was limited to 25 total in existence. It is a leather cover. Yes, it's made out of goat skin. That's horrifying. Okay. It is horrifying. Baby Some teeth written. Necronomicon stuff. Yep. Um, it's written in, um, and, and actually has Roman numerals limited to 25 numbered copies. And it was painted on real goat skin. Mm. $450 average sales. This is a very dark narrative, but definitely one that for horror fans and fans of Donny Cates, Sir Cates, you're going to enjoy it. And this is one of those weird sleeper books because only 25 exist. Yeah. This is the kind of book that'll skyrocket if something weird happens. But this is a very mature read, so it's tough to see this having a future on the screen. But you never know. You never know. You never know. All right. It would make a cool show, Baby Teeth. It really would. Okay, this is a really fun book. Star Wars Tales, issue number 19. We get the first appearance of um, Ben Skywalker. This is number two on our list. This is Luke's son in the Legends Correct. Uh, t- le- what's be- being considered as legends in Star Wars lore, where pre Disney canon, pre Disney canon, but they don't scrub them entirely. They're not, considering not them legends. They, they Thrawn, may or may not have happened. Thrawn was pre Disney canon, but he has somehow managed to survive just because he's that cool. Exactly right. So like they definitely pull from certain legend tales, but also they've happened so long ago, or they've happened in a time where they may just ignore it. And this is definitely one of the ones where it's like. They're probably going to ignore it. Yeah. You know, however, the more important thing is that in Star Wars 19, which is sitting $45 average sale debuting, debuting in 2004. Here's Luke's son. Very cool. Ben Skywalker named after probably Ben Kenobi. Probably. Also, we have a narrative where it takes place a little bit further in the future. It says here 126 years later. And you see a wreckage of the Millennium Falcon. And there's a couple people that are talking about it. But then a character shows up. A character with a whip. A character with a very... And a fedora. Known fedora, right? Yep. A cowboy hat, if you okay. will. Okay. Kiss. <laughs> we have wow. a cameo okay. of Indiana Jones. What? But it happened. Yes. Weird. Millennium Falcon crash lands on Earth Years ago, and Indiana Jones stumbles on the wreckage in this comic book. I think it's pretty fascinating. It's these types of books that I find a liking to. You know, just like random cameos of characters. If anything, I would say that it is one word. Bizarre. It's interesting to see Harrison Ford finding the Millennium Falcon. (laughs) Which is fun because Harrison Ford is in Star Wars. See? Wow. Okay. Number one on our list today is Kiss, Marvel Comics Super Special, number one, debuting in 1977. $200 average sales, debuting in Howard the Duck. However, this is the second appearance of Kiss in comic books. Kiss was a huge, huge fan of Marvel Comics, along with a lot of other rock stars back in the day. They would read comics on tour. You know, you can see Danzig in The Misfits reading comics on the bus. You can see shots of Gene Simmons, who has, according to Stan Lee, a photographic memory. And when they were in the airplane going to Buffalo, New York, where I was born, by the way, to the printing press to deposit the vials of blood. We talked about this before. We have talked about this book before. Ah, forever ago. The creation of this book consisted of a marketing plan that was wild. The Kiss production company sold the idea, rather, the not literally sold, but they like sold the idea to Stan Lee to do it, saying, hey, let's make the comic. Let's deposit a couple drops of blood in the ink at the pressing plant. Oh, man. 
And that way we can say that everyone who reads this comic is getting a little tiny bit of the kiss DNA in their, you know, in, in the pages of the book when they experience it. First of all, Look at him over there on the right. He's got that Deathwing shirt on with the nipples. <laughs> That's it right there. That's the nipple shirt. But he doesn't have pierced nipples, though. <laughs> Probably not. You can't tell from this. I image. can't tell. I haven't looked We need closely. to do more analysis. We need to do some nip analysis of these guys. Nip analysis. Yes. But also, this is bringing me back to, like, we were talking about this with, like, like Kia Morgan stuff back in the day, right? We sure like, were. This is, like, first couple of months of this YouTube channel. That's right. It's bringing me way back. Yeah. Uh, and we'll have to dive back into that because the those backlog. have actually resurfaced a little bit. But... Uh -oh. Um, what I found fascinating about this story, you can find this on YouTube. Um, Stan has actually just straight up talked about this experience on the plane ride to Buffalo, New York. They were going with the, the, the kiss members, all four of them, plus Stan Lee, Mark making it five. They took a plane to Buffalo to then drive to the printing house and then to do the deposit into the ink so that the red ink would have the traces of their blood. So Stan describes it in two parts. The first part is the experience with Gene Simmons on the airplane ride. And once they arrived to Buffalo, New York, it was as if the president was in town. The, the, the streets were shut down. Kiss was so popular and Marvel was so popular that they had to shut down streets, have police escorts and everything to, for them to go to the printing house to do this really absurd, bizarre act of dropping bloodlets into drops of blood into the printing, into the ink that would be then printed on this comic book. But the thing that I wanted to point out was Stanley saying that Gene Simmons had a photographic memory. And the way that he knew this was because Gene Simmons on the entire plane ride was asking Stan Lee about random comic issues and panels. Do you remember, Stan, on issue 24 of ASM in panel five, page six? And that's how Stan describes it, is that Gene was just super quick and obsessed with this stuff, which is probably like what Stan probably experienced in most of his life going to conventions. People super diehard asking no idea, about- No kid. I don't remember writing any of this stuff. I was just riffing. I was yeah. riffing. You know, that's how Stan worked. But you know what? We're talking Bizarre Comics. This hit $500 at a 9.0 this past week. What do you think about Bizarre Comics, Comic Fam? I love them. I love controversial comics. I like recalled comics. I like bizarre comic books, and fun. you should too. Yeah, I like. I quite enjoyed looking through those. What? Ryan liked it? I did. I'm so surprised. I don't like anything we do, so you, it's good when I like something. <laughs> yeah, I'm just here. Ryan's a bitter, bitter person, <laughs> Comic Fam. i to be here. No, no, no. You want to talk about something amazing? I want to get into this now. Ooh. We are going to dive into something that is so damn impressive. I um, wish you did not show me this beforehand. Like, the this second is sponsor Ugh. of the show. Super grateful to partner up with one of the best in pressing, cleaning, and restoration. We're talking hero restoration and... You got to give people like a warning before they see this. This is like... I'm telling you, comic fam, this is going to hurt. This hurts. It's yeah. going to hurt, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry you through. Ugh. It's going to be... It's going to hurt a little bit but it's going to get better. Just trust us through this journey. You ready to do this, Ryan? I think so. Fire Guy Ryan, are you ready? Yes. Take a breath, comic fan. I'm, I'm not telling you. I'm particularly attached to this comic, but I it's, know I'm wrong and everyone else is right, and it's it hurts. This is going to hurt your 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 ojos, comic fam, but we're going to do it right here, right now. This is a real comic book. Comic fan, we are looking at a Hulk 181. That is bent to all hell that it's actually standing on its own on the bottom half of it like it had damn legs no bueno imagine that visual yeah hulk 181 with legs that's right it is no legs. good so this right here we don't know the specifics about how this book came to be like this but i have my theories because this has happened to me before same but not with a hulk 181 no this is the problem when Collectors and, and, and readers, they try to push their long boxes and their short boxes a little too far. I think that's what happened with this. Someone was putting their book in there. Maybe this book, this Hulk 181, was put safely in the short or long box. But Someone got Hulk 180 and decided to put it in right after. And it brought the second book. I'll show you here. This can happen if this your boxes is the are book, too tight. If your box is too tight, it catches. You're putting in the Hulk 180 next to the Hulk 181, and then it catches the Hulk 181, brings it down, bends it to all hell, and you're thinking you're just shoving that book in, like, oh, we're good to go. But 
the worst have happens. smashed it down, and now it's crunched up on the bottom. And now we are looking at a Hulk 181 that looks horrendous. As Keys Are Us Comics says in the chat, Zombie 181 is what we're looking at. Now, however, this isn't going to be terrible for long. What do you do in this situation? You know, you just send it to Hero Restoration. And you let professionals deal with it. And cry I think first. that's what happened. You, you definitely cry. You cry a little bit. And You're going to you get. And then you send it off. There's there's nothing you can do with those tears either. You're not going to use it as moisture or anything. There's nothing you can do. I mean, you could try. Press it with your own tears. You press it with your own tears. <laughs> but you, I, don't, I do not um, endorse that nor yeah. recommend it. What I recommend is a book like this, of this caliber, you send it to those who know how to handle it. Oh. Look at that before and after. This right here is some alchemy. This right here is some magic. Like they were trained at Hogwarts. This book got a press job and you can get your comic books pressed by Hero Restoration. It's affordable. They have deals right now. They're pretty damn quick at getting these pumped back out. And all you have to do is include your grading sheet and they'll include that so that when they ship off books to CGC, they'll include your comics to be graded. Bingo. Now you don't even have to double them back. So this right here is a Hulk 181 that got the treatment. But look at this. Ah. Some of the things that I would be worried about is popping the staple. Right, that staple is bent. This staple needs to be somehow repaired. I don't know how to do that, man. You know, I'm someone who's been pressing for over five years, but there are books that you should not risk it on, and this is one of them. This book looked gorgeous before this problem happened. But you know what? Here, Restoration is going to do what they can. They're going to make Boom. it look like that. What look at hell? how freaking, s that's that right there is sexy. I'm just going to straight up say it. This is a essentially an ad showing the comic fam. How? That is sexy. How? Look at this. Boom. And their methods are years of practice. Some of the most professional artists in the industry as it pertains to comic restoration and repair. This right here is a press job. This is not considered restoration. This is just enhancing the comic book without adding anything to it. You will still get a blue label. And as members in the chat are saying, no color breaks from that bend. Yeah, surprised there's no wow. color breaks from that bend. Yeah, that is a... That's from JG. We also have Rudy says, Wizards. That's yeah. insane. The Featherway. Uh, Craven Comics says, Wow. Spaceman says, That's called witchcraft. These are members of the community who know by just looking at pictures of an amazing thing, a comic book that we all cherish. A lot of, gr this is a grail to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you got to imagine the person that was, that either acquired it like that or by mistake, by happenstance, made their book look like that. Can you imagine you're going through your collection and you go, oh no, I accidentally pushed one of my books too far down and you pull it out and it's Hulk 181 and you're, uh, the, the, I just got shivers. Look at this. A press job can do wonders and uh, a pre and a cleaning job can do even more. Look at this bump that Hero Restoration has on their website. A 3.0 Daredevil issue number one being bumped up to a 5.0. Um, we also have other grades down here showing the same thing. An 8.0 going to a 9.6. A 5.0 going to a 7.5. An 8.0 going to a 9.4. With the prices as affordable as they are, I will actually show you here. We have a couple of discounts because of Hero Restoration. Post the team up. They have actually added um, a handful of really great services that and has discounted them by 25% off. We have Warp Speed, a comic book that's $1,000 value. You get it pressed and cleaned. 55 business day turnaround, 25% off. The book is $45 to get taken care of. Typically $60. Slipstream which is a $3,000 max, is a 30-day turnaround time, typically $100, $75 right here, right now. And you can find them on herorestoration.com. Well, I should say. Hero Restoration Comics. Thank, Thank you. Herorestorationcomics.com, comic book restoration and pressing experts. Take a look at the site. This is my recommendation for the comic fam. I get asked all the time, where do you send your comics to get pressed, to get... Um, restored. If I did, I haven't really done that, but I'm looking at doing the service now that we've partnered up because I never really had an outlet to do that. For a certain caliber of book, especially, this makes sense. Like for something like he's holding there. Yeah, like you want first Iron Man. Like, yeah, you want to make sure you get it taken care of right. Yeah. Pressing and cleaning. This is the recommendation. You will not be disappointed. 
Um, as someone who's been pressing and cleaning for years, I've had this conversation with Russ Bright, the comic sensei, same with Jeff, the golden age guru. There are certain books you just don't want to mess with. And those books, get them to the professionals. Hero Restoration is the professionals. You won't be disappointed. Comic fam, we're talking about funny books. We're going to be talking about Doctor Strange. We saw the movie yesterday. We're going to get to that. Spoilers incoming, but not before we talk about a comic book that I was pleasantly surprised about. Sometimes I get asked for recommendations in my friend groups in, you know, civilian life, you know? they all A lot of my friends out here know that I do comics. Tom's the comic guy. But, you know, they don't really watch the show. They don't really know the scope are they about really what we do. Are then if they don't watch the show? They no. are, man. Now, there's a lot. We're a small are community here. Are my parents really my parents because they don't watch me on, on the internet? I you don't know. know. It's a good question. We can my ask them. My real parents would watch. Your are <laughs> My brother doesn't watch. Your brother, but you the know? thing is, they're not into comics, right? Like, Losers. like as, as heavy as as we are. Losers. You actually told me you tried to watch, you re, tried to read some comics with your mom. Or I something. did. Uh, my mom, my mom read uh, three issues of Department of Truth last weekend. <laughs> you had your mom read Department She's of Truth. She's all into JFK and conspiracy theory stuff. So I was like, okay, oh, okay. cool. You might take this. That could work. But no, it lost her. Not so like, much. I don't know which way to read it. Is it sideways? <laughs> is it sideways? Didn't, the two page spreads really threw her off. Well, sometimes I get asked. All right, yo. No, I, want, I want to read a comic. Like, I'm interested. Maybe they saw an MCU movie or whatever, or they heard that Sweet Tooth was a comic originally. Right. It wasn't even a superhero movie that pushed them in. The Boys is a big one, too. Yeah, a lot of people asking about The Boys, right? Um, so I thought of the, uh, about that moment when reading this next book we're going to review because I get asked about superhero comics sometimes. It's tough recommending superhero comics. I seldomly do that. I actively don't recommend superhero Talk comics. Talk about why, because it's probably the same reason. Because where do you begin? It's confusing. It's there's so much backstory and lore and continuity to get into. It's hard unless you have something like an Ultimate Spider-Man number one to jump into, to start at a number one, which is literally like one of the very few superhero books I recommend to like n new individuals. That's like a once in a lifetime kind of book. There's there's not a lot of other clean, clear jumping on points like that series. It gets confusing in comics. Right, characters have such long legacies. The, the, there's only so many like characters that these creators can even bring into stories. So sometimes you see a random character, even as a comic reader, you'll go, wait a minute, who is that again? And we were just talking about it. Like Holt grand design, like leans into that, like page after page of him just smashing villain after villain after villain. And you don't know who they are unless you're a big Hulk fan. Like I didn't know who they were. Right. So this next book by Mark Wade is a perfect superhero book to recommend someone and they're only on two issues and we're going to talk about them right now we have batman superman world's freaking finest this book is outstanding this was probably although i love the books we read this week i was most excited about this read okay and i can't wait for issues three four and ongoing to happen i think green lantern is going to be in number four or something green lantern's coming up in this book very soon and the cover has me all excited we have the superhero parts of comics that the average readers who are well-versed in hero stuff are going to enjoy. However, we have a clear flavor of the Silver Age yes. that is being actively respected on every single page without the silliness that you would get in a Batman 66, for example. Right. Dire Straits, Superman gets injected by Red, by, no, Superman gets injected by Red Kryptonite right in the chest via syringe. It is hardcore. However, every page of this feels like everything's going to be okay in the end. It's hard to describe, but it's got a very Silver Age kind of flavor to it that works a lot here. It's written by Mark Wade with art by Dan Mora, and especially I want to point out colors by Tamra Bonvillain. I love the colors in this book. I th That's the first thing. When you came over, we're like, we got to figure out the colorist of this because in the moment I couldn't think of it, but I knew I, I knew I knew these colors. It's weird to recognize colors, but I'm, I'm starting to learn like Crystal Halloran, like yes. Ice Cream Man is the first colorist I, I like, distinctively I know that. Onto. I can tell from a mile away like it's Mignola right. art, right? Exactly. And I'm getting that way with Tamra Bonvillain. It has these like really rich thick, like vibrant colors that just pop off the page here. Look at this poison ivy. And I don't even want to get too deep into a narrative. I want to talk you about me. Honestly, you don't really need to. It's we don't like, need to. It's kind of, it's like silver age comics in the sense that like they get into a jam and they get out of the jam and it's like 
It's not scary because at no point in the book are you like, oh man, Superman might not actually make it out of this one. Like, you know everything's going to be fine and you know it's going to work. And Batman and Superman are going to team up and come up with some sort of plan. It's it's about the, the journey and the experience. And the way I thought about it while reading it was that it's like a Silver Age story, but with modern style art, which really makes it tolerable for me because I'm not the biggest fan of the old school art. Absolutely. No, no, you have a, a slick feeling. The, the comic is beautiful. And... Because the, 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 the danger is so prevalent, you know, there are some major situations here where you are going to think, oh, no, this is probably where they're going to build the entire narrative going forward on. It gets wrapped up in like a comic, in like one issue. And then they do super comic booky things. You know, they're taking you through time. They're introducing you to a new villain. They're also fixing a situation that was recently introduced, paged, pages earlier, but it doesn't matter. We are following the world's finest, Batman and Superman. This is taking place in the past only a couple years, I think it's three years, into their kind of partnership that they're developing. They're realizing that, hey, if we have some issues in Metropolis or Gotham, we don't have to like stay in our respected areas. We, we can, can help each other. Help each other. That's kind of what's happening here. You've got Poison Ivy, a Batman villain, Hanging out on the, the daily planet, like the globe in Metropolis. So you get Batman in the daytime, oh. going to save the day. Um, can we talk about Robin and how well Robin is written? He's some really good comic relief here, but it's written in a way that's not like overly comic relief-y. It's a very hard balance, and you specifically brought up Brian, Brian Michael Bendis while we were prepping for this show and how it, the dialogue here, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be comic relief. There's a very... Overall, the writing in this book is a very fine balance between going too far and not going far enough. I don't know if Absolutely. I'm explaining that very well. But. No, that's a, it's, it's a strange way to describe the comic because it is strange to experience as you read it. It feels like you found some comic from 20 years ago that... That was written missed. recently. Yeah, but that was, that was drawn recently, but written old school. But it's, it's, a weird, it's such a weird mix of old and new, and it works. It works really well. We have um, Metallo, who has a kryptonite heart, which you know is going to be a huge danger to Clark Kent, to Superman, takes him down, and as mentioned, whips out a freaking syringe and gets him right in the chest. It's going to be a problem, and clearly it is. This is probably going to be our thumbnail, to be honest, because this right here is hardcore. But again, you got to keep in mind, by the time you get to this moment, you're going to be hit with, oh, this is like a modern comic book. This is like modern narrative. Mark Wade's writing it. But you'll kind of forget this heavy moment up until then because you're laughing, you're in awe by the beauty, the Silver Age vibes of almost everything's going to be okay by the end of this. This is superheroes. And I really just love the art team here. Dan Mora and Tamara Bond villain are the, the artist and colorist of Once in Future, for example. They've done a lot of work together in the past and it's my favorite part of this book and also of that book too, of Once in Future. It's not one of my favorites. But I love the art in there, too. Comic fam, this right here is a perfect example to be able to provide a newer reader. If you want to get them into something superhero, something superhero-y without having a huge line of comics for them to catch up on, giving them a bunch of backstory, you don't need that. This right here dives into one of the coolest, funnest, just things we all know. You don't even have to be into superheroes to know about. Everybody knows Batman and Superman. It, then, but also, I think this book taps into a, another market that is even harder for people to get into. I think this book works for the the comic fan who does not like newer stuff. Yes. A lot of jaded, absolutely. older comic fans are like, back in my day, you know, they, everyone thinks the back in my The opposite effect. Yes. This right here, if, if you have somebody who's brand new and you want to give them something to just jump in at, I think this is going to be a graphic novel. I'm going to be recommending right. to a lot of people probably have to keep stocked on my bookshelf to just gift to people. But on the other end, if you are, you know, if you're friend, we all have these friends, comic we fam, we're in the collector space. So we're speaking honestly. You're in here. the comments all the time too. We know you're out there. Ah, just modern books. Just, just, they I don't like make how comics they, like they used to. This right here is them making comics like they used to. This book works and it's worth trying. If you are a stickler for older stuff, there it is. Um, what else? Oh, we have a, we have an introduction. We also have a a um, a really cool um, collaboration that takes place because where is it? There it is. 
We have the Doom Patrol that they seek help from. So if you have any experience with the Doom Patrol, you know that they're really strange. The, the situations that they have to get out of are ones that are very comic booky. You probably won't think of, you know, it's kind of like, a, oh, that's so strange and bizarre that it works. When you have Doom Patrol in your comic book, you know that you're going to be getting a lot of that, which works so well for this narrative because it's rooted in what made superhero comics so awesome back in the day. They're fun. They're fun, and there's there's not a lot of other stuff that you need to know to really... Even, even when they're bringing in the Doom Patrol, my first instinct was, oh, great, I don't know anything about the Doom Patrol. I'm going to be so lost and confused. But you can see right down there at the bottom, it's like, nope, here you go. Here's a little bit about each of these guys. Just what you need to know to make it fun and, and to make the story kind of continue on without getting bogged down in a bunch of continuity. I want to know what the community recommends in the comment section below. When someone wants to read superhero comics, you give them Watchmen? No. No. Do you, give them, do you give them Dark Knight Returns? No. Nah, mm. You know, do, do, do you give them <laughs> New 52 Batman? Do you give them, you know, Ultimate Spider-Man? Like, yes. I want to know your thoughts, but I think this right here may just have been added to my list of things to recommend. This we'll is another see. one to put in that rotation, I would say. Only two issues so far. That's true. So it, might, it, might, it might turn out to be the worst comic ever, eventually. It might. But at least two issues in? Solid. It's got me. It's got I'm me. I'm enjoying this. It's absolutely got me. Comic fam, let me know in the comment section below. Official warning right here, right now. This is it. This is it. This Warning. is your last chance. Get we out are now. talking. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye. If you haven't seen Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness yet, get the hell out or be spoiled at your own risk. We appreciate you. We're going to spoil this movie. Get out of here if you haven't seen it. You've been warned. Do all right? not stay because there's some cool stuff in this movie that has not been released in trailers. And if you've managed to stay clean for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Don't let us soil you. Get the hell out and go to the movie theater. All right. So spoiler warning. Three, two, one. Spoilers. Oh my gosh. I love this movie. Yeah. This was I amazing. Had, I had a lot of fun. We just saw this yesterday at the movie theater. It's been about 24 hours, actually, since the movie started. Yeah, I want to see it again. I do, too. There's so much. There's so It's visually stunning. I want to get into the things we liked, some of the things we didn't like, and just overall, the oh, shit moments that we experienced. Because yeah. <laughs> I was sitting next to Ryan, and we literally were, like, talking to each other without saying anything. There weren't a lot of people in here, right? No. Are we, are we, are we saying that? It's a, it's a relatively empty theater. Yeah, we, we rented out the theater. We rented out the theater. Yeah, we, you know, we took a, like the whole team there. You yes. know? It's actually it quite fun... affordable to do that, by the way. It's like a couple hundred bucks to I rent out the theater. I was going to ask about that, but I didn't want to It's like 250 it's bucks or financial something. Financial questions are kind of tough. I figured you had to pay for every seat in the theater. No, no, no. You just pay for the room. That's weird. Yeah, they okay. have certain slots open because these, you know, a lot of people aren't there at 2 o'clock on a Monday. So we're there. <laughs> we have the whole team. I'm able to joke around. Follow me at Comic Time 101 on Instagram. And there were moments of this movie that I'm looking at Ryan, and it's like we're literally pissing ourselves. We're so excited. It's just like there were a, there was a moment where Ryan straight up goes, I can't even concentrate right now with what I just saw. <laughs> yeah, something so cool happened that it scrambled my circuits and I couldn't focus on what was happening after that in the movie because I, I couldn't focus. Okay, so we are going to go over the things we liked and the things we didn't like, and we're Love not going to... guys, but got to go. I haven't seen the new movie yet. Yes, leave. Yeah, leave Please if you leave. don't want to hear spoilers. Warning, warning. We're getting into it right now. So thank you. You can check this out later when we clip it out after you've seen the movie, but get the hell out and don't blame us if we spoil it for you. Although, Officially now... Yeah. What was your favorite part of the movie? It was probably the same thing. <sighs> okay, I, I have two answers to this. Hit me. My favorite overall part of the movie was Wanda. Wanda? Scarlet Witch, I think, Ooh! dominates this movie, and she jumped up to, like, top-tier MCU characters for me. I'd have to really think about it, but yeah. she might. she's easily in my top three favorite MCU characters after this. I think so as well. She is scary she as hell owned this entire in movie. this movie. Yes. The visual effects she's, were great. Mm. Sam Raimi stuff, you know? She's sexy, too. Look oh, at, yeah. There's I had, something I had about... some weird feelings yeah. this whole time. I'll just say that. It's a strange thing, because you're like, she's the villain. Right. But, damn. <laughs> you know? Hot damn. Exactly. Hot damn comic fam. So, the absolutely killing that them. she's been on throughout the entire MCU has been like no other character in the in, in the whole franchise. She so started far. us off with Disney Plus. Yeah, with Disney Plus With stuff. WandaVision. She is the one who really ushered us into this new era of MCU everything. And we're seeing her arc come to a near completion. Yeah, I don't know where she goes from here. I have some ideas. This movie. I have some ideas, man. I don't know. I was a little concerned. I was like, how are they going to possibly redeem this character after the, the horrible things she has done in this movie? Well, um, the things that we found out about her makes it so that her 
um, her arc that we just saw her, her time on screen, you know, the, the atrocities that she committed it, again, it wasn't all her. It's the dark hold, right? Yeah. You know, dark hold. That's fair. Infest your mind. So there's some, there's a redeeming quality. Yep. All she has to do is have her next arc where I think it's either going to be Dr. Strange or her are going to have to sacrifice themselves eventually. Okay. There's going to be something here. Um, and I think we, we saw that with Iron Man. Yep. We're good. We have to see that with another character. What better character would it be than the two probably biggest MCU characters that we've seen on Disney Plus and or theater? So right now, Scarlet Witch started us all out. And then her narratives continued and continued. Doctor Strange has been in two movies in the last year. He was the main focus True. of Spider-Man No Way Home. He was the main focus of Doctor Strange, clearly. As well as Wanda. I love what they're doing with these characters. Also one of my favorite things. They're clearly setting her up to, to have another arc, and I'm hoping it adds to the, um, to the Young Avengers lineup. I think that we're probably going to be reintroduced with her kids eventually. There's no reason to bring her kids back on screen. The same kids from WandaVision, by the way. Yeah. Unless they were going to reutilize them as Young Avengers, which brings me to my, one of my favorite things from this, um, from this, uh, from this First movie. One. There you go. America Chavez. <laughs> this picture. Okay. Zochi Gomez absolutely killed this role. Yeah. I care less about the plot device that she was being basically used for. That was my only gripe with her was that she didn't really do much herself in this movie. She was held captive most of the time and being chased most of the time. And yeah, she was a plot device. But by the end, especially with her coming into her powers at the end of the movie, she goes on a good enough journey. And like you said too, like where she goes from here. As an actress too, yeah. there was never a point. It, it's like, um, um, like Kate Bishop, right? Sure. I thought the entire time that I was like, I was waiting for it to be kind of cringy, but Hawkeye wasn't cringy to me. I enjoyed every second of it. Same thing with Dr. Strange. You know, they're doing a good job um, picking talented kid actors, which is not an easy thing to do. No, absolutely not. So what'd you think about America Chavez outside of, um, you know, the actress killing the role, good debut of her powers and, Obviously going to be a main staple in the MCU going forward. She's 16 years old. 16. We're going to see That's America impressive. Chavez yeah. a lot in the future. It locked her down early, so she's got her whole life ahead of her to spend their Marvel movies. But like you said, now you just you got me thinking about what they're going to... They're, they're building up to Young Avengers. They're, they're setting up... Some, are the champions or Young Avengers or some kind of team of young heroes? They're also building up to something else very clearly. My, uh, maybe, maybe my favorite. I had so many things. Like, maybe it. this is my favorite thing. Riff on it, brother. Incursions. They Jonathan mentioned Hickman. Jonathan Hickman, Incursions... New Avengers, Secret Wars, planets colliding, worlds colliding. Right. The oh, the general premise of his New Avengers run from I don't know 2013 or so is the uh, alternate universes are colliding with each other, and they mentioned it in this movie. Like Stephen Strange screwed something up and killed an entire universe. Right. That happens throughout this New Avengers run, and all of the different Marvel universes are smashed together. Only one of them can survive. So like through a Survivor kind of contest. You end up in Secret Wars with the Ultimate Universe and the main 616 universe colliding. And then we have one left after the after the story. So I think that's what they're building up to in like the uh, as the next big kind of like end game Infinity War giant crossover movie to build up to further down the line. It makes sense. I'm going to um, get into now some of the things that I mean, this is probably my m most favorite thing, the biggest reveals. We've already given plenty of spoiler warnings, but we're going to talk about it right here, right now. We had, accompanied by the X Men animated show, a little bit of the theme song in there. Theme song, yeah. Professor Charles Xavier in the animated, like enclosed wheelchair, hover chair thing. That yeah, has in the cartoon, which I classic. Was I'm kind of upset they ruined this in the trailer. I wish they didn't. Right? They I didn't wish they didn't to. show any of this. It was so much better experiencing this in theater. And I wasn't crazy about what they did with the characters, but I think them being there mattered more than my disappointment of them being short-lived because the Illuminati was a thing. Briefly. The spec <laughs> happened. Yeah. And they were all killed by Wanda in a matter of 10 minutes. Be interested to see what this does to the the hot list moving forward, but ah, uh, uh, I still haven't processed this. Man. Out of my chair, 
like very quickly. I didn't, I didn't make, you know, I wasn't being too nuts in the theater, but well, it was, uh, it was just us. I mean, it was just, I mean, I definitely, I definitely been. did a, I did a jolt. Yeah. When I saw this on screen, we are looking at John Krasinski as Reed freaking Richards. They name drop the Baxter building. Dude, okay, so I was okay. I got I got to back up. I had a, a soda, and you know, for the whole movie, I was drinking, <laughs> drinking. I shouldn't have been doing it, but right around that part of the movie, I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. You went to the bathroom really quick. But she mentioned when when they're in the in the little plastic prison cells, and you see uh, Rachel McAdams. I don't remember her name already, but she mentions she works for the Baxter Foundation. I was like, oh, that's officially the first like Fantastic Four thing we got in this movie. Anything. I'm going to the bathroom right now. <laughs> Ryan, I don't think I've ever, comic fam, I don't think I've ever seen Ryan run so damn quick. I did really have to pee also. So that Did you in. actually get there and go to the bathroom and come I back? I did, and Dude, I washed my hands. I don't know how you did that so quick, The bathroom man. was really close to the theater. Thank I got out of there. I was like, okay, where's the bathroom? <laughs> I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta <laughs> go. Right, back to the building, back to the building. And I was like, I knew, I knew the Illuminati scene was coming because we'd seen yeah, it looked it was, like it did in the trailer. Was, so I, I knew I had to go now. Oh uh, my goodness. I gotta say, I... I how, didn't, did I not ask you about halfway, you know, maybe a third way through the movie before the Illuminati reveal? I'm like, do you think we're going to see Fantastic Four? Like, I, I asked you and you're like, I don't know. There was that mountain that Wanda went to in the snow and like all the stone sculptures and stuff. She name drops Cthon. I, I still don't know. What, I, that, that's beyond me. I that's don't know the dark hold. He's the, he's I don't the, know any dark hold stuff. This he's, is all, the, he's the dark hold lord. I was getting like, oh, snap. Are we going to see like a sculpture of Dr. Doom in this room? Or like this, this felt like, oh, that would have been so good. Like a Latveria kind of place. It I was thinking so maybe we'll get did. that, but I didn't think this was going to happen. I thought this was all, you've seen John Krasinski like photoshopped over Reed Richards so many times. I did not think we'd ever get this. I was thinking like Tom Cruise as Superior Iron Man. <laughs> like, I was worried we'd get that too. Thankfully, that didn't happen. We just got Tom Cruise in the Top Gun trailer beforehand, which that's right. Uh, that's yeah. a, the the most amount of. Uh, that's all the Tom Cruise I need. Give yeah. me two minutes of him in a trailer for a movie I won't see. We had Captain Peggy Carter. Carter. That was freaking dope, man. It it, it was uh, it was Jeez. shocking to see these characters. I can't describe it. I just I've been covering these books for two years now. Yeah. The Illuminati. Um, recently Peggy Carter, but even before that, the what if, you know, um, even Black Bolt, the Inhumans, all of these characters that, yes, indeed showed up. Here's a really crappy picture because, you know, this is like, you know, just whatever images I can find offline. But freaking Black Bolt was in this movie. That that might be the biggest unexpected thing. I knew We knew Peggy Carter was going to be there. We, ex- we knew we, Xavier we was going to be there. Hoping that Reed Richards would be there. Right. But I never thought they'd throw in the Inhumans. I knew he was on the actual Illuminati from yeah. the comic, but like I didn't think they'd bring him in, especially bringing in the same actor from the failed show. Yep. And I actually really loved what they did with Black Bolt in this movie. I was Black very was pleasantly stellar. surprised. He got the kill on Doctor Strange in that flashback sequence, and the way he killed himself was mind-blowing, as you put it earlier. Like, yep. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I got to hear what the comedy, the, the, com- the comic fam mm. thinks about this. As far as spec goes, I'll just give you my two, th- two cents here. Um, I think that this is just an introduction of characters from another world, another they, universe. They threw mutants, Fantastic Four, and Inhumans at us all in 10 minutes. All in 10 minutes. So what that doesn't mean is that they're all gone and that they're not coming back. However, I don't, are we going to see Captain Carter again? I think there's a there very, very good chance. Because that, that, that felt weird that they brought her back just to kill her like that. But at the same time, is there another alternate universe of Steve Rogers that's another British Peggy Carter? I'm Captain sure there Super are. I th- I'm sure there there are. Char- I mean, we know that there's a um, there's there's other Reed Richards. Back. Yeah, and there's like five different Doctor Stranges in this movie. So like, exactly. It so, would just feel weird to get another Captain Carter. Like, another Peggy Carter as Black Bolt, <laughs> for example, or something like that. But, like, another Peggy Carter Captain America would be yes. odd. So, as far as things I didn't care for for the movie, um, I think if you're a fan of Sam Raimi, you're going to love it. I think Russ is going to really enjoy the Sam I'm Raimi crap. I'm excited to talk to him about this movie. But you hit me with a shocking thing yesterday, that after the first Director stepped Ooh. away. The original director of Doctor Strange 1 was on board to do this movie, and then he had creative differences with Marvel, like so many directors do, and he bowed out. He specifically said that this was going to be the scariest MCU film that's ever been made, and then he backed out because of creative decisions. So clearly, he wanted it to be more scary than it was. Right. They ended up going with Sam Raimi, 
just still a, a legendary director in his own right. But you told me that they were hunting for Ari freaking Aster. They had Ari Aster on their list of directors. They wanted to do this movie, yeah. Marvel, do we're it. praying to Thor. Lock him in for something. Lock please. him in. Ari Aster is one of the best directors of our generation. He's only done two movies. And he's only done two movies. Technically two and a half, but we'll talk about that one another time. Um, what, what are the two movies? We gotta let people Mid know. Samar and Hereditary, yes. one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Both of those, I think, are yeah. Anyway, anyways, um, the Sam Raimi aspect of it is gonna please Sam Raimi fans. I could not care less. I'm not a big. I'm not a Sam Raimi fan. However, I was okay with it in this movie. There were some weird scenes with like demons and like the the, the reanimated Doctor Strange at the end felt extremely Sam Raimi, like very Evil Dead. I'm glad I watched that before going to see this movie. But the scene with the music notes you talked about earlier. Yeah, there's a whole battle scene at the end where they're lifting music notes off pages and using a spell to weaponize the music notes. So you have like the 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 notes making music sounds as it's like a it was not my favorite thing. It was like that scene in crossover when Donny Cates summoned the speech bubble and stabbed somebody with a speech bubble. Like, yes. Like you're pulling a sheet, like a music note off of sheet music and throwing it at each other. Way cooler in the comics. It was a cool combination of sound and, and, and visuals, but it, it went on a little too long for my taste. And some of the music they used was a little too cheesy and on the nose. Other than yeah. that, I thought it was a cool concept. I also, I might be in the minority here. I did not enjoy what they did with Xavier. No. In this movie. I think he's, I think they need to retire Patrick Stewart as Xavier. I also would like them to move on from James McAvoy. I just want I want a brand new cast of mutants whenever they do decide to do mutants for real. What do you think about Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness? We saw it yesterday. We're hyped. I am I, I'm really leaning on my favorite things being America Chavez, Reed Richards, and Black Bolt. Um, getting the trifecta, the the X-Men, Inhumans, and what was the third one that we said? Fantastic Four. Oh, of course. And Fantastic the kids, Four. Invisible Woman, like the whole Fantastic that, Four. Yeah, the, the, the children and everything. Yeah. Like that. that is so much that it gives me a lot of optimism for the future of the MCU because anything goes. We learned that in Loki with timelines. We're learning that from Spider-Man No Way Home with the multiverse. Doctor Strange just showcased it, gave us a taste about what they can do. They can take any character, bring them on screen, any actor, Kill him off in 10 minutes, and it's all Gucci. I'm, I'm still processing everything. I'm still processing. You show me Reed Richards here, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, that, that's a thing now. He's in the MCU. I want to know what the community thinks in the comment section below. Don't forget, you can find this podcast on SoundCloud, Spotify, Citra, and iTunes. You have just listened to the Bags and Boards show. Before you leave, go down in the description, comment. It'll enter you to win this Invincible number one whatnot. Omni-Man Tyler Kirkham variant. And as always, you got to geek responsibly. Enough said. And that's podcast number 59. We did it. Woo! Wow. Mm. We appreciate your time today. It's been fun. It's not as hot in here today. Hey, we hit time. I have 10 more minutes and until my call. Tom's got a phone call in 10 yes, minutes. Yes, yes, yes. We did it. I have to go to the bathroom, but we good. I also, I'll go to the bathroom later. We don't, we don't, we don't use the bathroom at the same time. We definitely don't. No. Never have. No. Just that once. Just that one time. We don't talk about that time. But comic fam, um, Make sure to comment before you leave. We have like over a hundred people here throughout this uh, this podcast, and I'll tell you, it's always a little disappointing to see like ten comments when we're looking for comments on our show. We know the live chat's here, but we don't want to lose the live chat. We will eventually, but we will yeah. if you guys don't comment on our videos. So do me a favor, enter to win a giveaway. Um, we have a lot more giveaways planned. This is our milestone one that we're doing, but know that we have a lot of big things coming. We're going to be doing a show here pretty soon probably a comic karma we're going to announce like over 25 winners because some members haven't claimed their prizes and after so much time back in the it, mix back in the mix do new announcements we're going to do a comic karma show pretty soon and we're going to be announcing a whole lot of giveaways we appreciate your time today comic fan we'll see you so soon we love ya have a great week